This week, all on CrossFeed News. Our commandments allowed the school to view. Would you take the Eucharist? Would you prompt unapproved priests? Would you pardon infidels? What about the oil well? Hello, everybody, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. And it's good to be with you all at the end of a Thanksgiving weekend and on this, the first Sunday in Advent. Yep. Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, and uh, I hope everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving. Ours is really strange because we didn't have a turkey. So we went completely meatless, although I had turkey gravy because we had a jar left over from last year that was still good. <laughs> so that was it. Otherwise, we had all the trimmings. Cool. Yeah, you said you were going to go vegetarian this year. Yeah. Well, we we did not go vegetarian, so. No. <laughs> We we enjoyed ourselves very much. It was a very nice, um, very nice uh, Thanksgiving for us. So, how you get so big to do food of this kind? Well, where do you want to start? Well, we should start with how we opened here. Uh, if I can get this thing to open, it's uh, not opening for me for some reason here. Uh, but I wanted to start off with with with. Uh, um, yeah, okay, it's, it's loading slowly, so we better go somewhere else. Um, let's start with the oil wells. I wasn't quite sure the point of that story, so why don't you go ahead and start there? Okay. Well, um, the, the big thing about this... You have to, you have to change a little bit. There it is. There we go. Um, the, the thing about this article was, uh, there's, this is in, uh, let me grab the article here, um... Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. In South Dakota, near, I'm assuming that's pronounced Bear Butte, <laughs> um, we have a, they want to, they found a, a bunch of uh, oil reservoir underground, and they want to, um, they want to build it. But the, there was sort of a, a sort of side question here that it is near a religious site for American Indians. That says, uh, slightly more than a mile from Bear Butte, an important religious site for American Indians that juts above the prairie on the northern edge of the Black Hills. Developers said the oil field should not bother anyone at Bear Butte. And, um, but it was just the fact that they mentioned this in the article, and it kind of caught my attention, and you know, and I just thought about this whole question of um, what do you do when you, for instance, discover oil, but it is, and in this case, it's near, it's it's a mile away, right? But and I don't know how noisy um, oil drills are. Um, I would think They're a mile not. away, it, it it wouldn't be. Um, in fact, um. I'm assuming they're not real noisy because in if you go in Los Angeles, there's a lot of oil drills in town. Um, <laughs> you would know it because they're inside of buildings. Um, but the, it's the, a, the, the noise would be actually in doing the original drilling and everything. Uh, that's where the noise would be. Um, I think the, the other question too is, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it shouldn't bother them, and hopefully it'll stay far, far enough away from sacred lands. That doesn't say that a lawsuit wouldn't be coming from this direction. Right. <laughs> Especially depending on how far the reservoir extends underground. You said it's a pretty shallow reservoir. But, you know, if if you sort of imagine this sort of shallow, um, you know, if if the edge of it goes underneath their area, they're going to want uh, their percent. Oh, I'm sure they will. Um, but they said no opponents to the project appeared at their um, Board of Minerals and Environment hearing. Uh, 
So, um, you know, it looks like so far that they are pretty uh, content with this. It doesn't say whether or not they got a pretty percentage of, of it or not, but I imagine if it, you know, is anywhere near them, they would do that. I would think. But it's just, you know, I, I just got thinking about, okay, what would you, what would you do if, if oil was discovered near your church? You know, um, what if they found that the well extends actually, or the, the reservoir extends underneath your property? You know, would you... Jed Clampett and I would have a lot in common. <laughs> you know? So, I and, and I don't, you know, I don't know how all that works as far as... Uh, if you know if it extends under there, do you automatically get to claim it, even though they're the ones drilling it? Do you need to drill your own and see see who can pump it out the fastest? Or I'm not sure exactly how that all works, but I think they're generally um, there's a certain royalty that they pay you. Yeah, they pay you a percentage of of the value. You don't get the whole thing. I know a friend of mine. Um, remember my first church? They discovered gold on some land that he owned in Canada, and uh, they were working on this mining of that, um, <clears throat> and he would be get he would receive a, a royalty for the gold that they were able to mine out of it, because um, you're not putting up any money of your own, right? You know, you're not you're not putting up anything. Uh, you're de- you're just um, allowing them to you know take out something so you get a percentage of it. Uh, even that was pretty hefty. I'm sure. Month. But I mean, again, it, this is something that takes years to plan. You know, people don't understand that, you know, uh, oil, you know, the oil business, you, you read about the, all the profits, but what you don't read about is all the money they spend and wind up with dry wells and, <laughs> you know, and, and all the money they spend trying to, to find it. I mean, it's not an easy thing. So, you know, if there's a, you know, if they are obligated to do, do, do anything, I'm sure the money will, you know, be properly paid to them. Uh, and it would be a percentage of, of what they take. But uh, see, there's there's a question, there's a, you know a question though how, you know, I mean they talk about you know how how okay you you own the land how far down do you own the land mm-hmm. if it's if the um, property is six hundred feet below your your church do you own the land six hundred feet down right you know for that matter what if. Uh... What if you? What if your church building is on a fairly small plot of land, and oil's discovered sort of immediately under it? If you know they determine that it's there, do you relocate? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they would pay you to do that. If you are anywhere in the way, uh, they would pay you. They would buy the land from you and pay you to relocate. And um, so you can go off and go your merry way, and you know they you, they can too. Um, but again, what they would probably do is try to come up with a fair settlement for you for the for for the, for the land and the oil. Although in this case, you know, you talk sacred ground. If it's a, uh, what if it's your your church's cemetery? But and then they do their best to move the graves and move the whole thing. But if they don't do it, don't forget poltergeist. Or <laughs> they didn't move the cemetery properly. Yep. I remember that movie. It scared the bejeebers out of me. Anyway. Um All right. Okay, let's now okay, the the, the, the Seuss Christ is properly uh downloaded here, so let's go over to that. Alright. Okay. Uh, now, apparently this has been around for a while, but coming back in the news um, on the American Lutheran Publicity Bureau, Bureau website, somebody linked to it, and I looked this thing over and I couldn't believe it. I had to do with the deal. Now, it's been around for a while, but a church, a Episcopalian church out in um, Cal- uh, uh, Pittsburgh actually did this. Yes, this is, uh, now it says it's a Eucharist based on the works of Theodore Seuss Geisel. Now, it's not really. No. Okay? It's their version of very bad Seuss Geisel. Yeah, it really is. I, w- I was so... I, mean, I, I read it like... Okay, so 
when I when Jim first sent me the link to this a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot to um I forgot to use it, and uh, and so I wanted to make sure that we talked about it. All right, first of all, um, it's I you know I, I first saw it and I went oh no you know, but I thought well okay it's not that tough to do decent uh, sort of Seuss esque poetry, okay. And in fact, I can say that because I did it last year, not a Seuss Christ, <laughs> but um, my Christmas Eve sermon. It's it's still online at shepherdoftheridge.org. Uh, if you search on like Grinch or something like that, you'll find it. Um, and uh, and but I did my sermon, my Christmas Eve sermon last year was I did sort of uh, um, as a it was sort of a sequel to um, to the Grinch, okay. Um, and the thing that I noticed with this is that, see, Dr. Seuss didn't just use rhyme. He used a particular meter and I, I can't off the top of my head remember what it's called, but if you, you pick up any Dr. Seuss book, you, you pick up on the meter really quickly. And, and so I went into this with that sort of meter in mind and they, their rhymes are bad. Their meter is bad. Um, it's, it, and the words are bad. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, okay. Let's give our let's give our hearers a a a. So it starts off with a section in this called um, the Word of God, and um, <clears throat> Almighty God, to you our hearts are open wide. All of our want wanting in you we confide, and from you our secrets we just cannot hide. Clean the things of our thumpers, and we shall be happy jump jumpers. Oh, that's not right. No. Now, jump jumpers. You know our thumpers. I mean, this this is just yeah. You now, know. See, okay. First of all, Doctor Seuss. It would have been um, if he was doing this. It would be clean the things of our thunkers, not thumpers. That's With a true. K, not a P. All right. Um, you know. And the other thing is, is that this, all of our want wanting, all right, when he would do stuff like that, he'd have like two or three of those in a row because it was a parallelism. They completely missed that. It would be our, our want wanting in our um, need needing in our, you know, or, or something like that. Not, he would never right. use just one by itself. Yes. Um Let's see, what's another part here? Um, oh, the first reading. Oh, yeah. Now, what would you have for a reading in a church service? What is their first reading? Yertle the Turtle. Yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't the Lorax <laughs> or the Butter Battle Book. <laughs> well, the Butter Battle Book is sort of irrelevant now since it is all about um, the Cold War. That, yeah, since it's really a nuclear war, yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's I don't know, I don't know. You know, we could we could have you know, uh, 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 I don't know. We could you know they they already changed this. They could change some of the words there. You know, uh, uh, um, well, I you know. know. See, I, I mean, I think if you get out this far, yeah, I mean, that and, place and where they pray the Koran, that place with the nukes in Iran. <laughs> And also, it makes me so sill to think about Kim Jong Il. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, okay, but, I mean, it wouldn't be. It's not any worse than what's in here. No, uh, no. But they did remember the Lorax. Yeah. For everything that Loraxes care for earth and water, fire and air, we pray for people everywhere. Okay, Loraxes don't care for fire. <laughs> this, this is a nice little uh, four elements thing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I suppose that's about alternative energy, you know. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why they're praying for the dead. For Dr. Yeah. Seuss, teacher fair, whose rhyming lingers in the air. I mean, we pray for people everywhere. I mean, it's not like, you know, we thank you, you know, we thank you for, but. Yeah, it was actually praying for Dr. Seuss. It, it also says, for those who no longer share our air, for those who've died, we offer prayer. Yep. So yeah, I I don't know why they're, um, you know they yeah. they could have, 
you know, <laughs> okay, if you're going to do it, don't, all right? But if you absolutely insist, do it well. <laughs> well, our, yeah, the confession of sin. God, we have wronged you, and we need to say boo-hoo for the things we did and didn't do. We are not content. We want to repent 100%. Um, now. All this fetch makes me want to wretch. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong with you. Really. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. Tooting our horns and stamping our feet with angels and archangels and the whole holy fleet. Ay, ay, ay. Well, did you, okay, here's the words of institution, because this is, after all, a Euchar, or a Suscharist, right? Um, on the night before he died, our Lord lifted some bread and sang with loving pride, Dear friends, my body to you I give, take it, share it, and you I will live. From now on, whenever you meet, I want you to remember our time, and let this be the thing that you eat. When they were done with this, when they were done with their sup, Jesus again spoke with his friends. While high, he lifted the holy cup. It's like the, I have a hard time reading this because the meter is so horrible. Um, That's right, you ain't got that right. For, for the new covenant, this is my blood, a sign of the Lord's continuing love. Let it replace the one from the flood. Um, whenever you drink this, think of me, keeping me close at heart, so that our friendship may go on endlessly. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I got one other thing to say. Well, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Uh, Theodore Geisel was a lifelong Lutheran. I think he probably wind up joining the ELC. I'm not sure about that. He started out in the Missouri Senate. He started out in my previous parish. He was baptized in my previous parish. So, growing up, he would have done good old page in 515 in that church. I am positive, you know, he grew up then on the common surface. I am positive he would be rolling over his grave at this. That's, I mean, you know, it, you know. I mean, I guess the only thing that could have been possibly worse is if they, you know, started off um, with, with a communion statement. Can you have communion here or there? Would you like communion everywhere? <laughs> Would you like communion in a box? Would you like communion with a box? <laughs> yeah, you know, at least they actually did use bread and wine and not green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know. Or I guess they could have, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how we could have done Fox and Sox to Eucharist here. Yeah. I... That would have been a great first reading instead of Yurt of the Turtle, Fox and Sox. I, you know, you could probably do something <laughs> with Hop on Pop, you know, <laughs> the whole, um, you know, the humiliation and, and all that sort of thing, so. Yeah, um, you know, Pastor Brown can moo, can you? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, or even all oh, the places you'll go, you know, yeah. the promised land, and, you know, there's something you could do with that. But of course, of course, they, they end with that, by the way, uh, right. you know, go in peace to the places you'll go. Thanks be to God, whose way we know. Once again, the meter's off. So, oh, yeah. it's 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 sad. It's sad. Um, and you look at the pictures. I mean, the pictures are kind of sad. You know, people standing there with, you know, this this cat in the hat thing, and um, you know, oh, it's just it's sad, folks. Okay, so you know? here's hey. what it, the the use of the cat in the hat there. Did they get permission from his um um uh, what's the word? Estate. His estate. It Who would knows? surprise me. <laughs> I don't. I yeah. don't know. <clears throat> but let's just leave it here, folks. Um, this is really. <laughs> if you're going to do this kind of stuff, try and do it at least well. But you know, I mean, I read this, and I, I'm a person who argues in favor of variety in worship. I really am. Yeah. But you know, we also the Lutheran confessions also say you know that you should you should try to avoid frivolity. You know, this, you know, 
And some people kind of, well, what's what's frivolity? Well, okay, I think we all agree this is probably frivolity. This yeah. is probably frivolous. Yeah, yeah. This this is just silliness. It, you um, know, and and here's what happens is you lose. It, it's like what you have has no meaning. And um and so oh well you know the the liturgy of the service eh, it means nothing we can you know pick and choose and 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 do what we want and you know and it's one thing to tweak it it's one thing even to to use something radically different from a traditional liturgy all right it's something else to do a parody of a traditional liturgy which is basically what this is all right i mean i could see um I could see, uh, you know, anti-Christian groups using something like this to make fun of Christians. I wasn't thinking that's really anti-Christian, but I could definitely see Mad Magazine doing it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, right. It wouldn't have to necessarily be anti. But yeah, this is a parody of the liturgy, all right? If you want to parody the liturgy, fine. There's certainly plenty of things in it that are you know, that you could parody and, and have some fun with, but don't do it as a substitute for the liturgy in an actual, um, worship service. Right. Because we all know that, you know, you know, you know, the liturgical people, you know, at, um, um, and seeing, you know, Star Wars A New Hope, because when he says, when the force be with you, they just automatically respond that and also with you, you know, so, (laughs) you know, so, you know, yeah, we, we, we understand how to make fun of ourselves in, in front of the liturgy, but, you know, hmm, no, this is the parody. But, you know, at least, at least they had a real bishop to do it, or a real priest to do it. Hmm, yeah. All right, so, running over to China, uh, where, and shout out to our Chinese um, listeners and viewers, we do have uh, some people there that, uh, a few anyway, that, that regularly catch our show, and, um... So, uh, for it's for the first time in nearly five years, the government-backed Catholic Church in China has ordained a bishop who does not have the approval of the Pope. I'm not going to pronounce his name. Um, but uh, in northeast of Beijing, they have a new bishop, and um, he was not. We don't we don't have a lot of information, but the main thing is. They don't have the approval of the Pope on this one. Right. And the Chinese, I thought it was interesting, the Chinese authorities forced eight Catholic bishops who have all been consecrated with Pope Benedict's approval to stand to attend the ceremony. Now, it doesn't say if they laid hands on him or not. But, uh, you know, what you would do to consecration, but they at least attended. You know, I thought that was interesting. That, you know, they were for, required and forced to attend. Um, now, I mean... This is interesting because this would now place this 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 branch of the Catholic Church outside of the Roman Catholic Church, um, mm-hmm. because um, if you are not given the Pope's approval, then you're not considered a real bishop. And the um, you know and and the priests that he ordains are not are not considered valid. So none of the acts that he does would. Or they would be considered valid. No, I don't yeah, think. that's right. Because that was all right. I had um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, one of our members asked me, said, "Pastor, I've got some um, Catholic family that's going to be here over Christmas, and uh, and they want to know if if they can have uh, Catholic communion when they come to Shepherd of the Ridge." And I said, "Well, we don't offer Catholic communion. <laughs> we only offer Lutheran communion, and uh, and I don't think that they'd be." If you know if they're practicing Catholics, I don't think they would want to anyway. Because, um, and I, I mean, I looked all this up when I responded to her email, and and I said, uh, um, you know, according to Catholic doctrine, it's not valid. It, it's not a valid uh, Eucharist if um, if it's not performed by an an approved uh, priest, you know, with the whole apostolic succession and that. So. Um, so and then I talked about some other things too, but you know that was kind of a in in it, that applies to this that this priest would not have the um, he he would not be official and, and therefore any act that he performed would not be considered valid. Well, 
he now apparently he's a bit was a priest who was who was ordained properly. So, you know, that much, you know, we can't, but now he's being a bishop, it would not be considered. And therefore, any ordinations he does, besides right. that, would not be considered official. Therefore, it's any bishop priest that he would ordain, they would, uh, question. Right. Um, uh, at, at minimum, it would be questionable. Yeah. Um, but, and, because, and it doesn't but, count. But I, Go ahead. I, but the other, time, on the other hand, since he, you know, if these other, you know, properly ordained bishops laid hands on him, he would still be considered, you know, to have apostolic succession. So it's really a very interesting situation of how, the, you know, Rome would approach this, this thing. But would it count if, um, if, if they were doing it under duress? You know? Is, is it like the woman that touched Jesus' cloak and, you know, felt the energy go out of me, you know? You know, and in that case, obviously, he's God. He knew everything that was going on, and this was an act of faith, and, you know, and on and on. But, you know, th- do they, like, is this, like, you know, sort of forcing, like, touch it, touch it, you know? And then all of them lay their hands on him under, you know, they're being forced to do it. And then, then you know, <laughs> there, now you're a bishop. I I wouldn't think it would work like that. Well, it goes right back to the thing where it shows, you know, what's 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 the big deal within, you know, China is obedience to the government. Because there's actually two Catholic churches. Uh, the one that's supported by Beijing, which is the, the above ground one. And there's also an underground church. And, you know, I wish I knew more about this. It says another underground church which obeys the Pope in Rome. So they wouldn't recognize this bishop then. Mm-hmm. But what else it does is another question, because do they have bishops then that have been ordained in secret by the Pope or something? That's a good question. Well, you know. hmm. yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm showing my... Um, ignorance of Rome. I uh, don't really know, but you know, this is, you know, this just shows. This, this is a shirt I'm wearing tonight. The shirt's illegal in 52 countries, right? Um, China's one of them because it has on the back of it. It says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God and salvation for all those who believe." And um, you know, this is this is the reality that uh, there's in China. The church teaches what the government wants them to teach. And if you don't like that, you have to meet out in the woods somewhere. Um, or, you know, or something like that. You have to meet in secret. So, um, <clears throat> it makes me really appreciate what we have here. Um, it really is, makes me cry out to God for these people, um, you know, to, to be with them and protect them. But, you know, at the same time, you know, in China, they would never have a susicle. I mean, language aside, all right? But they wouldn't tolerate that kind of garbage. They, 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 yeah, you're right. They wouldn't tolerate silliness. This is too serious of a thing for them. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's, it's something that they, they get it. <laughs> you know, they're... This kind of stuff in persecuted countries, that just doesn't go on, right? Um, when when you're being, you know, are, are you going to die for bad poetry? You know, and these people they put their lives on the line. Which before we talk about this anymore, let's go to Pakistan. Yep, I was going to say, as we're on the topic of uh, persecution, this this is sad. Go for it. Hey man, this don't feel right. My donkey senses are tingling all over. Um, so you got uh, there's a woman in Pakistan, um, uh, Bibi, if that's how her name is pronounced, B I B I, um, has been jailed for nearly 15 months, convicted in a Pakistani court earlier this month of breaking the country's controversial controversial blasphemy law by insult, insulting Islam's prophet Muhammad a crime punishable with death or life imprisonment, according to Pakistan's penal code. She was sentenced to death. All right. Now, understand this isn't covered in the article, but I was uh, reading about this alternately, that um, this isn't a person here. Um, Prosecutors say that B. 
BB, a 45-year-old field worker, insulted the Prophet Muhammad after she got in a heated argument with Muslim co-workers who refused to drink from a bucket of water that she had touched because she's not Muslim. Um, in a brief news conference at the prison where she's being held, she said last weekend that the allegations against her are fabricated by a group of women who don't like her. Did we cover that part of the story before? No, I don't think we have. I don't, the first time I ever remember even hearing the story. Okay, so, all right. Was... Must have talked about it. I, I I must have had a conversation on Facebook about it um, because of the because we had our um, service of prayer for the persecuted church a few weeks ago. Um, and so, but yeah, so this is this is not. It's not like she was going around, you know, wearing this shirt. All right, it's not like she was going around sort of flaunting her Christianity, which she should have every right to do, but not in Pakistan. All right. Um, but she wasn't doing that. It was one of these deals where somebody says to her, um, do you believe that Muhammad's a prophet? <laughs> and she said, um, well, actually, no. <gasps> gotcha. You know, I mean, it's, did she insult Muhammad? Yes. Yeah, she said that he's not a prophet because somebody asked her what she believes. All right. It's not that she was it's not that she was drawing pictures of him with a bomb for a turban or something. All right. And and what did this all come about? She touched a bucket. Well, I'm not gonna drink from that. A Christian touched that. You know? I mean Fine. Go <laughs> thirsty. Yeah, no kidding. But you know, it was she said Muhammad's not a prophet. And so now she's being killed for that. So, um, so the point of this article is that there's, there's this whole question because she hasn't been sentenced yet. Um, the, the sentence, the, the sort of, according to the law, the sentence is death. But she hasn't actually been sentenced yet. And so there's a question of whether the president is going to, um, is going to give her a pardon. Well, no, no. It says that it's punishable with death or life imprisonment, uh, according to Pakistan's penal code. She was sentenced to death. Oh, okay. All right. However, right. that was by that. a lower court. Death sentences automatically go to their version of a Supreme Court. It's, the, it's automatically reviewed, just like ours are. You know, it's just like death penalties in the United States are automatically reviewed. Um, yeah, it's automatically appealed, and so. Um, um, <clears throat> um uh so they're waiting then for the their high court to 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 rule but this says if the high court were to rule uh it, it, that she should be put to death he would pardon her uh spokesman for the president said um pakistan committed remains committed to protecting religious minorities uh uh, Pakistan is a nation of many faiths and religions, and all Pakistanis, no matter what their religion, are equal under the law. President Zar Zardari has followed the case of Asia Bibi closely and will take appropriate action, if necessary, to issue a pardon or grant clemency to ensure that Asia Bibi is neither incarcerated nor harmed. So, even, even... A preliminary investigation showed that Bibi was falsely accused, a government official said Monday. Right. Uh, the president asked me to investigate her case. My preliminary findings show that she is innocent and the charges against her baseless Pakistani Minister for Minority Affairs, Shabazz Bhatti, told CNN. So, but there's two prominent uh, Pakistani Muslim leaders that are threatening to call for nationwide protests if the president pardons her. Right. So, you know, that's that's just great. Let's, uh, you know, because when you talk about nationwide protests, right? In America, nationwide protests would be, um, well, depending what it is. I mean, you've got the sort of the extreme of the um, the Rodney King riots. You know, that wasn't nationwide; that was isolated. Um, but uh, you know. It, it, in general, where you have nationwide protests of, of something like, say, the Iraq War, for instance, all right, you've got, uh, you know, people picketing and, um, you know, maybe some, I, I remember uh, seeing graffiti uh, 
in in certain areas you know maybe some things like that um lots of lots of nasty blogging and um you know tweeting and you know, i mean facebook groups popping up and and stuff like that okay um it, you know and that's all really legitimate and and that um but then when you've got you know in in a country like this a nationwide protest would involve guns and bombs you know i mean you think about you know how this would affect the christian churches in pakistan this would affect all Christians in Pakistan, possibly even all religious minorities in Pakistan, not just Christians. The world has changed. So, I mean, that's just scary. And and these guys have just tremendous weight. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like, if I or or even if, um, you know, our our uh, our synodical president or, or even any of the like the president of a larger church body like the Southern Baptist or something like that you know called for nationwide protests or or, or said all right get your guns or something like that most people would go whoa hold on a minute there <laughs> you know um but that's sort of standard operating procedure in some of these countries not that everybody there is violent, but you've got so many people that just blindly follow these leaders that it makes it scary for everybody else that's living there. They're still a minority in most cases, but um, it just makes it really scary for the other people. You know, you, you look at, at Iraq, even at the, the height of the um, insurgency and, and all that kind of, and the, the fighting, most of the people in Iraq were um, really just wanted peace. And, uh, and, and we're not siding with the insurgents and all that, but they're terrified of them at the same time. We should flee in terror. Yes, that would be the wisest course. So. Yep. Well, and then, of course, there's arguments that I don't think we really need that they're doing down in Texas, where we try to be, uh, uh, get offended. And we try to set up a situation where we're going to have trouble. Mm-hmm. And um, so that is this. Um, so there's a. Uh, this is why I am not a Republican nor a Democrat, but a proud, unenrolled, as they call me in Massachusetts. They won't call, let me be go by and un- independent. I must be unenrolled. So I'm proudly unenrolled. But um, anyway, there's this uh, state representative, Republican Dan Flynn. And he wants to pass a law that any Texas teacher who wants to can display the Ten Commandments in a classroom. Now, why would I want to display the Ten Commandments in my classroom is another question. And that's the whole thing. Is what's you know? the point of it? And the thing that gets me is that well, well, this is mm-hmm. so just to help people recognize the Judeo-Christian heritage. It's purely a history lesson. It's not for religious purposes at all. Yeah, right. At least be honest about it. But they know that if they say, well, it's for religious purposes, it's to promote Christianity or it's to promote a Judeo-Christian worldview or something like that, then it's going to get thrown out of court. Or, I mean, the you know, it, it'll never go anywhere. And so we've got to pretend that it's something it's not. Are you a God-fearing man, Senator? <clears throat> Yeah. So these we've talked about different uh, Ten Commandments displays, um, and uh, the it's there's kind of a mixed result. Sometimes they're, they're allowed, sometimes they're not. Of course, the irony is that the Supreme Court building has the Ten Commandments on the building, um, so you can't say that a Ten Commandments display is unconstitutional. But um, you know, you you always have to ask sort of what's the purpose of it. What's the the context? And I they make a really good point here that in, you especially have to be careful in schools because children are a captive audience, right? If you're going to have a Ten Commandments display, are you going to you know what other teachings are you going to post on the walls? You know, you always have to look at both sides of these things. So 
you know, oh, well, this is for the purpose of history. Okay, well, or, you know, are we going to, what other pieces of history are we going to pick and choose from? We hold these truths to be self-evident. Um, and, and, and frankly, uh, you know, there's probably plenty of things that we should talk about that don't necessarily get talked about in schools. Um, uh, certain pieces of, uh, you know, just, uh, oh, you, okay, we just had Thanksgiving. Okay. You know, looking at, there's so much misinformation as uh, for our Thanksgiving. One of the things that we did, um, was we looked at the, um, the actual history of Thanksgiving and kind of looked up myths about it and stuff. And like, all right, the pilgrims were not Puritans. That was a completely different group. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and now for something completely different. They were separatists, but they weren't Puritans. Well, there were two kinds of Puritans. There were, because the idea was they wanted to purify the church of, in England, and there were the groups that thought they could work within it, who later, you know, uh, and another renewal movement, of course, later on was Methodism. It's also a renewal movement within the Church of England. But then there's the group that, yeah, the separatists that felt that they needed to separate from it. Right, right. So these are separatists, not Puritans. Right, but but they're but they're related. I mean, they had the same Calvinistic theology. Um, you know, they, they had many other things in common with 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 the, with the Puritans. I don't know if I, you could really separate them. Um, and how I mean, and the Plymouth Colony and the Massachusetts Bay Colony, you know, were very closely related. So I'm not sure I would necessarily agree with that. Okay, how about they didn't land on Plymouth Rock? Well, no, they landed in Provincetown. Right. All the, I mean, we were watching Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and after that, they had the Charlie Brown, uh, you know, um, the Mayflower story or whatever, and they landed at yeah. Plymouth Rock, Plymouth, Massachusetts. They're like, no, they didn't. <laughs> well, they landed in Provincetown, but then they came across the bay, and there, there's actually a a flag at um, Provincetown saying that's where the Pilgrims, for, the Mayflower, first landed. Right. But, you know, it did make its that way into Cape Cod and across to, uh, the, to, uh, Plymouth eventually. And that's where they, 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 that's where they actually settled. I know. It's, it's 30 miles from here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there several times. So, and, can, and just, you know, they, um, there's a lot of, of debate over the, the sort of details of it. They didn't, um, they didn't really dress like that. Um, you know, the, the, the buckles on the hats and all that kind of stuff. That yeah. was all afterward. Um, the, you know, there's just, uh, even the, the blunderbuss, uh, you know, guns, they didn't use those. And, um, okay. if you really want to know what, the, what, what life was like in that era. Okay. What you need to do is come out here to Plymouth. Uh, go down south, uh, to, you know, go past my house. You can wave at me on uh, 120 as you go by. You take Route 3 down to Plymouth. And there's a really cool place down there called Plymouth Plantation. Only instead of spelling Plymouth with a Y, they spell it with an I. And they recreate the 1600s. Uh, it's the year 1623, where they, um, where, the, where, where the pilgrims went from being a communal garden to being private property owners. And in things started turning around. I think it's that secret set. Um, and if you talk to these people, like, can I take your picture? They look at you funny. Because cameras don't exist in the year 1620, I think 1627 is what the year it is. Um, you know, and so they'll ask you what that is. What is that box you have? Uh, and um, they talk in authentic accents. They've done a tremendous amount of research to find out what the accents would have been like in that era. And uh, what the houses were like. Uh, they actually had houses that were completely inaccurate. They ripped them all down and uh, put up authentic housing from that era. And they lived, and these people do this, um, you know, uh, eight hours a day, year round. I think, except for New Year's and Christmas, the only days it's not open. 
Uh, but so in the middle of winter, they're it's, yeah, they're out there. It's authentic of exactly what it's like, and and uh, 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 and they have they can and they they stay in character the whole time. It's a little infuriating actually, because <laughs> you you want to ask them how did they do certain things, and they look at you funny, like what kind of idiot are you? <laughs> Why are you even asking me? Don't you do it this way? You know, so I mean, it's it's a very different, very different uh, place to go and spend some time. So um, uh, there, you get a very good idea of what it's like. Right. But uh, 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 yes, we are very proud of our our pilgrim heritage up here in this area. Uh, but recognizing there is a difference between Plymouth Colony and Massachusetts Bay Colony. So, I mean, point being. <laughs> The, and by the way, also realize that yes, they did come over for religious freedom, but when they got here, they were just as intolerant as um, that. You know what they found, what they left. Um, Provincetown was uh, not Provincetown, but Providence was founded uh, because Judge Roger Williams was a Baptist. Uh, they forbade um, Christmas. It was a popish holiday. Yep, yep. On the other hand, the Puritans had a love of beer. So, and not all bad. So, the point you were making, however, <laughs> is that, you know, if you're going to put the, the Ten Commandments in there, you know, uh, you know, here's the thing. Okay. So, you're going to put the Ten Commandments in there because it's a piece of history from our, our forefathers, you know, held to that. Are you also going to um, put, uh, have, a lot of schools have uh, um, Thomas Jefferson's Bible? That all men are created equal. Um, which went through and removed any supernatural references to uh, to Jesus, that he was just a great teacher and, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know? Because a lot of our four, the forefathers of our country, that's what they believed. Yeah, they, they liked the Ten Commandments. Well, at least the second half. Right. Well, I, again, it depends a little bit where you were, where you were located, but you remember if you were in... Um... You know, if you lived in Pennsylvania, it's a good chance you would have been a Quaker. Because they had, you know, uh, the Quakers in that area appear, of course, um, by the time of the Revolutionary War, um, some of the uh, 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 churches that had started out Congregationalist had become Unitarian. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and liberal thought was, 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 was heavy in the air up here. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, uh, and that would be, you know, Jefferson, he was deist, but uh, essentially, you know, Unitarian, Unitarian as well. Um, and that just, you know, what, what, there are different areas would do with different things. Um, and of course, in, uh, 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 you get to Virginia, of course, that was the Church of England. Uh, so interestingly enough, the, the Lutheran churches there had to be ordained by the, Ordained by the uh, Anglican priests. Wow, come around full circle, huh? <laughs> but um, um, yeah, but Peter Muhlenberg, um, uh, there. Uh, 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 if you want a family that has a lot of history, uh, 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 the first mis- Lutheran, real Lutheran missionary in America who really did something was Henry Muhlenberg, and his son, uh, John Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg, became a um, Colonel of the Revolutionary War, and he was a pastor down in um, uh, Virginia. Uh, Virginia, and the story is that he had his colonel's uniform under his robes, and at the end of a service, uh, he uh, said, "There is a time for war, and a time for pe- time for peace, and time for war, and this is time for war." And signed up the men, and but he uh, uh, was the uh, 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 fought in the Revolutionary War. Matter of fact, his statue is the only Lutheran statue, statue of a Lutheran to be found in the Capitol Rotunda. Hmm. Um, his father, Henry Muhlenberg, had a very hard time with the Revolutionary War, and he founded the Pennsylvania Ministerium, the first Lutheran uh, church body in America. And he just really struggled with the war because he, Romans 13 said, you obey the government. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, he, he, his church was hop, skip, and jump from Valley Forge. But uh, Peter Muhlenberg became, I think was a senator. His brother was the first speaker of the House of Representatives. His brother-in-law was the first president of the University of Pennsylvania. 
Um, so very uh, important Lutheran family, very important family in American history. Bet you didn't know that about Lutherans. Nope, I didn't. Oh, say so we're say so you, you got to be a student of history. Yeah, well, Other you know, good. it's a little easier to study it in your neck of the woods. You know, not as That's much true. of all that kind of you know Revolutionary War stuff in Wisconsin where I grew up. So we have more like focus on Lewis and Clark. You know, yeah. well, you had the Battle of Toledo. No, that was between Michigan and Ohio, not between. But that's why you guys lost the UP. Okay. Because Congress decided that Toledo belonged to uh, Ohio, and it just in and to make it up to Michigan, they gave Michigan the UP. That's why. Yeah, that's not Wisconsin up there. Yeah. And and ironically, the people in the UP are more loyal to Wisconsin than they are to Michigan, anyway. <laughs> Probably are, but uh, that's still the truth. Uh, uh, that's still boy that that worked out. Um, so yeah, there's but that's right. There's no yeah. You guys of course just had the battle of the cheese heads or something like that. Hey, <laughs> I think we better end this up before we get the, any more sublime and ridiculous here. <laughs> so yeah, I um oh here this picture's for you, Jim. If it ever loads, there we go. Oh, that's a great picture. Yep. Uh, that doesn't, doesn't come out on my screen too well. Hopefully it comes out on others. It's uh, the uh, takeoff of um, uh, Norman Rockwell's uh, things, uh, 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 Freedom from Want, uh, starring Superman and Power Girl uh, and other heroes. Uh, I actually have the comic that that was originally printed in. So. Oh, yeah. I am oh. such a geek. You know, it's all there is. There the you are. Picture. So. God give you all a wonderful week in his grace uh, as we and a wonderful Advent as we get ready to head from here to the celebration of our Lord's first coming and prepare also for his second coming. Good night, everybody. God bless you.